tired of all the old games we keep playing, all the corruption and crime in our system, the endless fighting and bickering with our politicians, while nothing really gets done and everything seems to just get worse? Welcome, everybody. I'm your host, Steve Saylor, and thanks for dropping by to play Designing the Future, the new home version of the game that's sweeping the nation. And I mean really sweeping because it is one big old mess we've made for ourselves. Uh, okay, we're just going to stop this for a second. Um, I know this seems kind of silly. Let me just quickly tell you why I'm doing this. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I'm trying to explain this to a couple of my friends, the resource-based economy as opposed to the monetary-based economy. And it might be able to solve a lot of these big problems we're facing right now. Anyway, I'm trying to explain this to my friends, which is hard to do in just a minute or two because there are some points along the way that require a little elaboration. So when they started asking me things like, uh, what color robes will we be wearing in the cult? I said, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll make a couple of videos and explain this as quickly as I can, and, and you can watch those. And they said, well, okay, but it's not going to be boring, is it? Because you know, our attention spans aren't what they used to be. I said, you babies, you big babies. What do I have to do, make a game out of this? And they said, yeah, oh, that'd be good. You, we like games. And that's why I got this version of the new home game and, and why we are about to play Designing the Future. And it's going to be fun, I hope, so I can keep my friends awake. We're drawing from the pile that is called Sense or Senseless. And it says, explain the history of money. For $100, and this is to get rid of $100. See, that's why it's the opposite of Monopoly. Oh. You'll have 60 seconds. Oh, we have a time limit. That, that makes it more exciting. <laughs> to explain the history of money without going crazy. That's the hard part. It's definitely senseless. Yeah. Yeah, we just hit the timer. And that sound comes out of somewhere. And we haven't always had money. You know that, right? Um, we used to wander around in tribes. Uh, I'll hunt, you gather, and we could gather enough to survive. And then we gained more control over the land, agriculture, and we could produce an abundance of a crop that other people don't have and they want it. So we needed something to represent the value of stuff. And we've always been fascinated by shiny objects, gold and silver. Yeah, that's good. Then we can make them into coins and our technology evolves. And we can make machines that can print on paper. And, and somebody says, hey, carrying around all this gold is a hassle. I've got a safe place in back where I can keep the gold and, and I can print some nice paper with numbers on them to represent the shiny stuff, which represents all the other stuff. And this works, people like it. Then, then the guy starts thinking, I bet I could print twice as much of the paper than I have of the gold. And I could loan out that half and get paid back a little extra. And the wonderful world of banking is born. And pretty soon they're making four or five times as much paper than the gold. They don't even try to hide it. A few people are asking, oh, what's this paper really worth? Don't ask questions. It's good for the economy. Here, take some more. Shut up. Go shopping. And then the bankers say, you're trying to keep track of all this paper money in relation to the gold. It's insane. Let's get rid of the gold. But then what are we going to use to represent the value of everything? Uh, bigger paper, fancier, yeah. Uh, give it a cool name like bond, uh, treasury bond. <laughs> okay, time's up. <sighs> okay, I think I did a pretty good job of it. Uh, and the judges agreed that's good enough for you to get rid of $100. And I didn't go crazy. Uh, I was becoming slightly agitated, but who wouldn't? Trying to make sense of that, you know, they're just making up the money out of nowhere. And that fractional reserve scam where, where they make four or five times as much paper than the gold, well, now it's up to ten times as much. And there ain't no gold. Yeah, go figure. Think about that for a second. You know, if you or I want to get a loan for a house and, let's say, $100,000, they just type those numbers into the computer and presto, sign here. And that's how money gets created now. When people agree to go into debt, then they're holding our debt in their reserve. And that 100,000 number, they type in the computer 10 times as much. They can say they have a million dollars now. Yeah. And if you can't make those payments, they'll take your house or your car or whatever the loan's for. And all they did was type in the and of course, you know, with interest, you're going to end up paying them 300000 when it's finally paid off. 
And in the first few years, almost all of your payments will be going toward the interest. And then you say, hey, I'm still a little upset about this whole uh, interest thing, but why am I paying most of that in, in the first years? And they say, well, that's because if something should happen to you in the near future, God forbid, we want to make sure we've been able to suck you dry before that happens. Now move along. Don't ask questions. Go shopping. <laughs> okay, cool down. Relax. You know, you, you got to try to laugh about this so, so you don't begin weeping uncontrollably. Um, another yes or no? Five seconds. Is the Federal Reserve a part of our government? No. No, it's not. Lots of people think it is. I used to because it has the word federal in there, but so does the federal bar and grill and the federal garbage disposal company. Little deceptions in the money game that we've gotten used to, you know, like $9.95. Oh, it's not $10? No, it's $9.95. Oh, okay, well, that's better, yeah. The Federal Reserve, that's um, just an independent bank or a private corporation. How does a private bank gain control of a country's money supply? Um, I'm answering for you and I think I know this. I know how they did it um, last time in 1913 and all the other times too, probably. They found out which politicians were the key players in getting their legislation passed and they said, Let's take them out to dinner. Best restaurant, food, and wine. And they said, hey, we've heard what some people are saying. You know, this may not be in the country's best interest, but, but they don't understand. Look, you've got enough to deal with right now. You don't want to get involved with this money game. We know how to do this. It's what we do. So we'll make the money. We'll give it to you. And you can pay us back with, with a little interest. Yeah, that's the way it works. Oh. Here, let me fill your, your glass. There we go. Oh. You know, we're thinking of changing the name from Central Bank. Get bank out of there. Central Reserve, maybe, or, or Federal Reserve. Yeah, that could be just misleading enough to get you off the hook. So we'll handle everything. You won't even have to look at our books or worry about regulating anything. By the way, um, that word regulate, how much to get that word out of your vocabulary? More? Regulate, regulation, regulatory, any form of the word. No, no. Maurice, no, sure. we're going to print some more tomorrow. Re-elected? Of course we'll make sure you get re-elected. Don't worry about that. Hey, do you have a, a date tonight for, for the party? Because we can set you up with... Yeah. And that's how they did it. Pretty much the same way it's done today. No. Exactly the same way it's done today. <laughs> All right, anyway, you got rid of another $200. You're doing pretty good. Hey, I believe it's my turn. I got a five, a one, two, three, four, five. Back to the quickie pile. And we're headed to the cemetery. Ooh, wow. Uh, according to police reports, there have been numerous sightings recently. People have begun seeing the free market hanging around the cemetery late at night with a shovel in its hand digging its own grave. <sighs> okay, uh, for $300, advancements in technology have made it possible for you to replace your employees with machines. In economic terms, what is this called? Oh, yeah. oh let's see, some kind of unemployment, right? Due to technology. Yes, close enough, that's close enough. Technological unemployment. So um, how exactly is this is it making it dig its own grave? Well, you see, it's caught in a trap. It, it's like it has this internal dialogue pulling it back and forth. One side saying, if you go with the machines and get rid of the people, well, these employees, they're also consumers uh, who buy your products. And without jobs, they can no longer be your customers. They won't have money to buy your stuff. Oh, don't listen to that. Oh, just think how great it would be to get rid of these workers, these people who are always wanting things from us, like health benefits and higher wages, a share in the profits. Oh, give me a break. They don't show up sometimes. They have to take their kids to the doctor or some such nonsense. 
but then they won't have money to consume and sales will take a downturn and that won't sit well with our shareholders. Can't be tolerated. No, we need those profits to stay alive. We need that growth, no matter how cancerous. So let's see, uh, well, what is it gonna do? The free market, get rid of the people. Oh yeah, of course, that's, that's not a very difficult decision when machines can work 24 hours a day and they won't demand any benefits and won't talk back. Yeah, okay, well that's good enough for me to get rid of 300 and, oh no, wait, I've been replaced by a machine. But wait, that's, that's, that's a good thing, right? I was getting pretty sick of that tedious manual labor, so now I can be free to spend more time at things I'm interested in, that I enjoy, that are rewarding and contribute to making things better for me and the people around me. What? You don't want me to do that? You want to force me to stay in this game? You're going to create some more jobs in the money game just so I can keep buying your stuff? Oh, great. Oh, thank you. All right, your turn. A three, one, two, three. This is back to the WTF pile. And ride the cycle. Ride the cycle. Oh, no, wait. No, this is not good. It's, it's ride the vicious cycle. Ride the vicious cycle. Of consumption. Of consumption. And here we go. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, don't worry, it'll be over before you know it. It goes by fast, and, and it's hard to see all the twists and turns on the ride, but try to remember them, because it's after the ride is over. That's when you score the points. Okay, now, you know the basics of our consumption cycle, right? That it, it needs to keep going and growing to fuel our money economy. Yeah, you probably already know this, so just hang on, because it's wild, and it's out of control, and the worst part is that... It's backwards. Oh, it is so backwards. Oh. Okay, so we have to continually make stuff to sell it. And some of us make these products, but everybody has to have some kind of job to make money so we can consume them and then throw away what's left and do it all over again. And then sometimes we're making things we really need, you know, things that benefit people. But sometimes, no, any kind of crap will do as, as long as somebody can convince us that we really need it. And we have to keep the cycle going or the economy breaks down. So should we be using the best materials to make quality products that are built to last? No. Oh, but if we're going to keep selling more to make those profits, then we have to make them built not to last. Look out! So we need a plan, okay, to make our products become obsolete in a hurry. Yes, and we'll call it planned obsolescence. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let me off of here. I want to get off this ride. Oh, did you catch all that? Because it's hard to see sometimes with, with all those twists and turns in the vicious cycle. But here's where we can get rid of some big money. So $100 for each twisted turn you can remember. Anyway, you see what I mean when you take a good, close look at the money economy and the, and the vicious cycle, how we lose at every turn? A five, one, two, three, yes. We are into the future now from a new pile, a pile of possibilities, yes. Alien abduction. Alien abduction. Oh, no, wait, this is a good thing. Yeah. yeah, this is going to be good. And the ship is on its way. And everybody can come along for the ride. Hey, don't worry. There won't be any needles or poking or probing. Hey, we're on our way already. Beaming up, Scotty. And what a view. From a distance, it's a beautiful, peaceful planet. From a distance. And now we're beaming inside the ship and the aliens don't look all that different from us. They don't look threatening. Um, 
They tell us to sit back and relax as this huge screen with super high def lights up and begins showing us pictures of a planet. And it's so beautiful, uh, we're not sure at first if it's our Earth, but it is. And they tell us that we're lucky to call this place home. Not all planets are so abundant with life and natural wonders and resources. And we have to agree, especially when we take the time to see it from a different perspective. And they say, yes, it's quite miraculous, the land and, and the water, and the animals. Then the pictures begin to change. Not so beautiful anymore, but rather dreadful, disturbing. And they say, but we're not so sure about you, the way human beings are behaving, the way you treat these things, and especially each other. Then the images are gone, and they look at us, and they just say, why? Why do we do this? Uh, treat each other? Uh, I don't know because um, because that's the way it is. Uh, there's there's not enough for everybody, so some people have to starve and suffer. No, they say you know you have more than enough resources to provide food and shelter for everyone. We just scanned your whole planet, the land and the water and all the natural resources. They show this all these papers. They print it out. And they, they say, you know, you could do this yourself, not as quickly as we did, of course, because our scanners are top of the line, built to last. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that built to last thing, we need to work on that. Yeah. Then they tell us they've calculated these resources along with the number of people, and there's more than enough. So then, why? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of know, um, because you're wasting your time and your effort and your resources on things that don't take care of these needs, that don't solve these problems, that only perpetuate them and make them worse. Yeah, having just taken a good look at the consumption cycle, we know what that right is all about. We just don't know how to get off it. You put one foot in front of the other and you get off it. You, you get rid of everything that doesn't contribute to the solutions. Everything like our armies, weapons, our militaries. Yeah, that's, um, that's easier said than done. People have been saying this for decades. If we could just take all this money and energy and resources that we spend on making things to kill each other and spend them on taking care of each other, then maybe you better do it in the future, starting right now, if you want to have a future. Whoa, that, that almost sounded like a threat. Maybe these aliens are the intergalactic exterminators making the rounds and getting rid of the messy tenants that are trashing their homes. That's probably what we'd need to get off our butts and do it. Someone to say, stop burning the dirty fuel and polluting the atmosphere and stop killing each other and grow up or else we spray. <laughs> yeah, they say get rid of your killing machines and all these meaningless games you've created with that worthless paper. Oh, you mean money. Yeah, what the hell is that all about? All these things you occupy your time and energy with that aren't relevant to people, to the needs of your species. Get rid of them, then get busy putting your house in order. Yeah, but what if, what if we can't do it? What if we can't figure out how to go about that? How do we even begin? Some people would say, well, we should do this first or work on that. And we'd end up arguing about it because it seems that's what we people do. It should be obvious. We could tell you how to do that in two words. The alien reaches over and pulls this page, it shoots out of the printer, and it's just two words. It says computer chess. Oh, uh, yeah. A uh, computer chess, okay, uh, yeah. Then he reaches over and hits a button and says, you have 60 seconds. Oh, no, no, what, I, I didn't think we'd be playing the game up here. Really? 
oh Jesus and uh, what does this mean uh, is this like a clue or, or a riddle yeah oh no that, that means we have to think and we don't really like to do much of that but the clock is ticking uh, oh, okay so um, the computer wants to play a game of chess with us and, and if we win we get their ship no 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 I, okay, I don't know. Help, help me out here. What is it about, uh, you know, when you play a game of chess with a computer, it always wins, right? Unless you dumb it down, but it's faster than we are, and it's better at making the right moves because it can see every... But we taught it, right? I mean, we put all the information in there about the rules and how each piece can move, strategies, and everything about the game. So. So then it, it can process all that information in a second and see every possible move and all the possible results of those moves and all the moves after that and, and there's no way we can keep up. Okay, all right, stop, stop, stop. All right, I think I see. I see what you're getting at, right? Okay, we, we put all this information from your scan, we put that information about every resource, where it's located, how much is there, and everything about our climates, so soil, open land, water. We, we put all this into the computer and it can help to show us the best way to utilize it. The most logical, efficient way to set up systems to produce food and energy and housing. Yes, because the logic, the rationale that leads you to these strategies and decisions is right there for everyone to see. No need for people to argue about it, no need for lawyers to present their slanted, uh, perhaps emotional appeals. No need for politicians to get involved with their special interest motives and debate the issue while nothing gets done, you know, the way you do things now. Yeah, this other method, this would be the sensible way to go about it. When boom, suddenly we're back in that beam of light. On our way back down. And you roll a six, two, three, four, five, six, back to the sense or senseless pile. What jobs are relevant? Yeah, okay, well, this makes sense, huh? Time for a little downsizing. What jobs are relevant? Everything must go. It's the sale to end all sales. <laughs> okay, you can get rid of some money here. A hundred dollars for each correct response and you'll have 30 seconds. And go. No. Yes. No, no, yes, yes, no, 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 yes, no, no, uh, yes, no, no, no. Yes, no, there we go, wow, time's up. Oh, right, I'm not sure how many there were, we have to ask the judges how many. And we're rolling the dice on our future. Three, one, two, three, up once again, this is sense or senseless, my turn. Okay, here's a, uh, a question about energy, right? In the resource-based economy, the aim is to stop burning these dirty fossil fuels and switch over to the clean, renewable, and free sources of energy, such as solar, wind, hydro, geothermal. Okay, but you know what they say, that uh, we have to keep burning the dirty stuff because the technology isn't quite there yet to supply our needs with the renewable sources? For $200, is a yes or no here? Five seconds to think about it. Can we supply our needs at this point in time with the clean, renewable energy sources? And so. So I'll say yes. And I'm right. I get rid of it in time. What? Some of you are saying no. 
You say that we can't uh, do that right now? Okay, but wait, now, you remember that at the beginning of the question, it said in the resource economy. A oh. uh, little trick question there, because if you're thinking about our current monetary system, in, in that case, you're probably right. Uh, yeah, in this system that turns us into these consumption machines and that wastes so much of our energy playing the money games. In the resource economy, consumption for the sake of consumption, that would be senseless. This would be about using our resources intelligently and conservatively. And things would look a lot different. For instance, uh, let's say if we've gotten rid of all the occupations that aren't relevant like we've just done, then instead of the freeways looking like this, they now look like this. Yeah, imagine that. Two-thirds of all this traffic on the freeways have vanished. But people aren't driving to these jobs anymore. They're spending most of their time working around their homes and their communities. And Okay, so how much have we saved right there? And think about all the energy we spend shipping things around the country and across the oceans, like food and other products people use. Right now we're growing food on these huge mega farms and we pack it onto trains and planes and into trucks and start those engines and burn that fuel. And now imagine that most of this is produced locally. Every city and every town have their own farms and community gardens. And where you can't grow it outside, we have greenhouses everywhere, big ones, because this is what we're doing now. We're putting our energies and our, our resources into growing things. And we grow food inside high-rises, too, with hydroponics and other technologies that are available now. Yeah, instead of using up all this land horizontally, we can now grow vertically. Uh, we can convert the buildings that are already there, like the office high-rises that are vacant now because the investment bankers and stockbrokers have moved on with their lives. Yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> and how about our energy sources? Instead of that massive coal-burning plant moving electricity through hundreds of miles of high-tension wires strung out across four or five states, God, just like with the food production, it, it's all done locally. Every city and every town, every community have their own systems, with whatever's most efficient for their climate, you know, weather patterns, wind and solar, hydro resources, rivers and oceans with their wave and tidal potential. And we can do this right now when we've gotten rid of all this needless waste that we accept as natural and necessary for that monetary economic growth. I rolled a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. WTF one more time. Could machines turn against us and, and take over the world? No. No, that's, that's a common knee-jerk reaction that many people have. As we've seen here, we'd be using computers, machines, technology to continually improve the methods of food and energy productions and all these other things that are relevant to people. And it would all be open source. All the information that's being evaluated would be right there for everyone to see and hopefully contribute some ideas themselves. Yeah, machines, they take over in the movies because you need that drama and conflict in a movie. In reality, these machines would just perform their basic tasks, their monotonous jobs that we've gladly given them, and that doesn't make a good movie. No, not a lot of drama there. If, if someone tried to make a movie of that, uh, I imagine it might go something like this. Starting out a day like any other. All the machines humming along, product moving down the line like there was no tomorrow. And maybe there wouldn't be, because this was a day that could change the fate of the world. Pat was over there with his chocolates, a real class act, long and laggy, built for speed. We all thought Pat was the sweetest thing we'd ever seen. Maybe that's because she was handling chocolate all day long, I don't know. My name's Chris. That's me on the left. 
along with my partner, Dale, we were into crackers. We could line those things up all day long. It was our job. We were good at it, and we liked it. Suddenly, I could feel something was wrong. I could tell by the music. Dale, look over there. Dale had seen it, too. No. The chocolates were on the move, but there was a troublemaker on the belt. Oh, it was way out of line. How did it get out there? Would Pat be able to handle it? Everybody was watching now. The moment of truth was about to arrive. Well, that didn't turn out to be much of anything, did it? No problem at all. Oh, Pat was good. Matter of fact, we were all pretty damn good, and that's how we meant to stay. And you can take that to the bank. If you can find one, they're all gone now. Yeah, you see what I mean? You're not gonna go out to the theater and get a babysitter and make a night out of it to see this crap. This is real life. It ain't the movies. Myro, this is a typical day in the life. We've got a mother and a father with two kids, preschool age. In 60 seconds, describe a typical day in the life of our family, first in the monetary system, and then in the resource economy. Okay, 60 seconds. Now, uh, we can decide what the parents do for a living before we start this. So, let's say he's a chemist, the chemical engineer, works for a pharmaceutical company, and she makes computer software, but got laid off a year ago. So, she, she just got another job, though, working for a bank. Yeah, credit card department, promotions. Okay, you ready? 60 seconds, okay. And go. Okay, so the alarm goes off at 60 in the morning, and they're up at dawn and racing around, and she gets the kids some cereal, packs their lunchables, and then she's off to pick up a couple more people. Her turn to drive in the carpool, 30 miles in rush hour traffic on the freeway. It slows to a crawl, and she shakes her head, and she looks at all these cars sitting there spewing exhaust. And meanwhile, uh, Dad drops the kids off at preschool, and then drives 20 miles, and listens to the news, uh, more soldiers killed in the war, another oil spill, insider trading, you know, the same old stuff. So he gets to the lab uh, where he's been working on some kind of cell growth experiment, but one of his co-workers has stumbled onto a formula for a better boner pill. Yeah, and now every, everybody has to work on that. And now what he wants to be doing, um, no, he's not happy with this, but he's lucky to have a job. Yeah. Meanwhile, she's in an office at the bank. She's on the phone to a customer, plowing through that sales pitch. Yeah, a new credit card offer with some low interest features that could really benefit them. Although she knows it won't, and they'll end up paying more in the long run. And she'd like to tell them the truth, but her call may be monitored for quality assurance. She hates doing this, but keeps reminding herself she's lucky to have a job. And now he's picking up the kids around 6 o'clock, and then they're picking up some bad habits at the preschool. And they're tired and whining, and he, he needs to be spending more time with them. He knows that, but those parents have to be working to make ends meet to pay those premiums, which keep going up. And anyway, Mom gets home an hour later, and they put some frozen dinners in the microwave. There's some housework to be done, and finances, yeah. You know, they usually try to get in some quality time with their kids before bed, but not tonight, because it's, uh, it's almost April 15th, and they're still working on their taxes, and they need to go through their bills, and got to pay some by tomorrow or get hit with another late fee, so... Uh, uh, I couldn't quite make it there. Uh, almost, uh, I mean, what's left? The kids fall asleep in front of the TV and they keep going till midnight uh, when they literally collapse into bed. Uh, no time or energy for any affection these days. No, they got to get up the next morning and get right back in the rat race. Wow. It's kind of depressing, isn't it? What we have to put ourselves through just to make it through the day playing this money game. And I think all of us can see the damage that's being done to people, to families by the stress and arguments that re result from the game. Not having enough time for the things that really matter. Not being able to raise your kids with the supervision and attention they need. And this leads to all these increasing social problems in our society, I know, okay?
That's depressing. <laughs> this is going to be a little better. I do believe it should be. 60 seconds. Come on, and go. Okay, so they get up in the morning when they've had all the sleep they need, which is usually around 8 o'clock. And they've got a little garden outside the back door where they pick some veggies for their omelet. And the kids are involved with making breakfast, fresh fruit. And mom takes the kids in the morning and they walk a couple blocks to where they hop on the trolley, electric trolley. And there's very few cars on the road these days. They've gotten rid of theirs. They don't need them now. This was just a couple miles out to the community gardens and they spent a few hours there tending and planting and harvesting. And the kids are learning about how to grow food and the different areas where people have experiments and progress. So meanwhile, Dad is online with a big group of, of like-minded chemical engineers. He's back to working on this human cell regeneration project. And there are scientists from Europe and Africa and Asia and the Middle East all over the world who are connected and working together on this project. And he finds this to be just fascinating. Okay, so when the rest of the family returns with more food at his pick, they make lunch. He tells them about what's been going on in his group. But they tell him about some of the experiments he's doing at the gardens. And then after some quiet time, he takes the kids and they walk a mile to, to this assisted living facility where he's been helping with some renovations. And there's a preschool down the block, so the kids spend a couple hours there. And when he comes to get them, he stays for a while and, you know, plays some, some games with the kids. And in the meantime, mom's on the computer with her group and working on a software program. And, and she's still into it when they get back around 5 o'clock. And so they walk over to the park, dad and the kids, and they, they get some more exercise. They join in a softball game. And it's not that kind of game where the parents yell at the yumps and, and get in fights on the sidelines, you know, because that would just be stupid. Uh, so they go home now and they have dinner. And, uh, I know. I know. I, I, Again, I couldn't make it. Um, but can I just finish this day? Because, oh, I'm, I like it here. Yeah, I like, uh, like it a lot. And so just, just a few more seconds, let me finish the day, okay? Um, <laughs> so, uh, okay, it's almost dark. They, they have dinner and then uh, this is their favorite part of the day. They're, they're working on this project where the dad has one of the kids and they're writing this children's story and the mom has the other kid and they're doing the music for it with this new software program that she's made and they wrote this Zeitgeist Lullaby song and put it online and, and other people have been listening to it and, and like it and that, that makes them feel good uh, that they've created something that people like and then the parents tuck them into bed and read them a story and the kids are all excited though about the big holiday tomorrow because it's April 15th. Oh, one of the biggest holidays in the land. When parents tell their kids about how they had to work at these jobs they didn't really want to do that weren't relevant to anything, to, to get this paper money and give a lot of it to the government on this day. To, and a lot of that money would be wasted on this or that. And the kids say, wow, that sounds crazy. And the parents say, oh, let me tell you about it. And the kids say, no, no, that's a, a, it's all right, we've heard enough. They so, say, yeah, anyway, there'll be festivities at the park tomorrow and games and, and a fun house. Uh, that could be a little scary, though, because it, it's the free market fun house, a flash from the past. And, yeah, you go in there and, and you get hit from every direction with late fees. And around every corner, you're accosted by bill collectors. And there are, there are scary repo men at every window. <laughs> It's a little traumatic, you know, they figure the kids should be exposed to this because they should know what we've been through and know that we never ever want to go back there again. And then when the kids go to sleep, then the parents still have a little time and energy for some affection and then they get up the next day and do it again. Yeah. That's, that makes sense, doesn't it? That makes perfect sense to me. I mean, that's how we could be living. If, if everything wasn't so backwards and so senseless. A five, one, two, three, five, which puts you up to the top row. And the final two questions, could this happen? Or more precisely, what we want to know is, could this happen in the near future? Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing. It should happen, and it should happen sooner than later. It has to. 
or we'll continue to see this money game, this Ponzi scheme fall apart and ruin lives as it collapses, and we'll continue to waste our dwindling resources and poison our environment to keep that vicious consumption cycle turning. And we'll continue to see our young people heading off to war and coming home in coffins or without their limbs. Um, yeah, this should happen soon. It, should, it has to happen. But could it? All right, well, actually, yes, yes, it could. And there are two main reasons why it could happen now, whereas just 10 or 20 years ago, it, it wouldn't have been possible. And reason number one, technology. Oh, yes. These automated production lines, uh, computerized robotics, you know, most of us aren't aware of how far we've come in a short time, how this technology has advanced. Yeah, this is our workforce now, and they could do 70, 80% of this work now in the next decade, and maybe 90% the decade after that. The rest could be done by volunteers, people who are interested in this technology, who see it as a challenge to put these systems into place and improve them and bring them up to maximum efficiency. But with all these war games we keep playing, We'd have to stop that, right? We'd have to grow up. But how can we do that when our leaders keep telling us that those people hate us and they want to kill us and their leaders are saying the same thing to their people? Which leads us to reason number two, which is technology. Yes, once again, the big winner. But not the automated systems we were talking about. This time it's the communication technology. You can go anywhere, visit with people on the other side of the world. For the first time in our history, we're able to virtually walk into their living rooms and get to know them and then realize that they don't want to fight wars either. They don't want to invade other countries or have theirs invaded, be put in a position to kill or be killed just because our leaders are finding it too difficult and too profitable to arrive at a peaceful solution. Obviously, it would have to be on that huge, massive scale from, from the bottom up, you know. But we can do this now because of this amazing technology that enables all the people in the world to see that we're basically the same and it's actually possible for us to be friends. Now when they say, oh, those people want to kill us, we can say no. You know, most of those people don't want to have anything to do with your war games and power struggles. And we know that because we've talked to them, yeah. While you've been threatening their leaders and they've been threatening you, we've gotten to know these people and they're just like us. They don't want that world anymore. And it's time for you to stop it right now, yeah. Stop it, grow up enough of this biggest bully on the playground routine. We're not gonna play that game anymore. It's me up there too, and the final question. Uh, would the people in power want this to happen or let this happen? Yeah, you know, it, it would seem that this small group of people who are really benefiting from our current system would resist leaving it behind. Those people who are in charge of the governments and the banks and the corporations who have this ridiculous amount of financial wealth and one segment of that group are the people who are working long hours in the day to remain rich, who are under an enormous amount of pressure and stress, who might decide to go with the transition because they've taken a good look at it and they believe it will actually make their lives better. Because all this pressure they're under, the, the demands on them require all their time. And they, they know that much of that time should be spent with their kids, their family. They shouldn't be paying someone else to raise their kids. They know that should be their job, and they'd like to be doing it in most cases, I believe, but, but they don't have time for it. You know, they're trapped in the game like everybody else. Okay, so besides this segment of the people who are in control, there's this other group who are often referred to as the idle rich. 
who were just living off their money or someone else's money, and they could be the most resistant to this new system, the system that would benefit everyone instead of a few. Well, we would have to make them understand that things would be better for them, too. A society without corruption and crime, better. They wouldn't have to worry about criminals breaking into their homes and taking from them or the worst things. We'd have to worry about someone kidnapping their children and holding them for ransom. All these terrible things that exist in the monetary system would be gone. And no one will be taking away their houses or their treasured possessions. They can keep all their homes, however many they have. Keep their cars, their yachts, everything. We would sincerely reassure them and make them see that they could continue to live with, to enjoy the same degree of idleness to which they've become accustomed. Now, it's true that most of them are used to having their maids and their hired help to clean up after them. and. Now that no one is in servitude to anyone else, well, they, they might have to do a little bit of cleaning up after themselves. But look, only for a short time, because, because soon we can get this new crew in there to do that work for them. And I'm talking about Robin ZG400 and, and the Jesse and Bobby Joe 2.0 cleaning companions. They do it all. They can serve your food and clean your table, wash those dishes, they'll sweep up and vacuum, and they can do your laundry. And if you're really finicky, uh, or what's the proper clinical term, um, anal retentive, yeah, about certain things like you know, the way your towels are folded, well, these cleaning companions have settings that can be adjusted for any level of retention. Right here, for instance, I believe Robin's settings are in the full-on anal position. And just look at that precision, that attention to detail. And if that doesn't satisfy you, well, come on, loosen up a little. Right? Ah! Maybe what if there were a few holdouts, you know, from powerful countries, so some of the corrupt tyrants who have the big militaries, and they're saying, hey, look here, this is my money. Yeah, uh, all this, and it's worth a lot. And then we'd say, well, no, not really. We're not using that anymore. Oh, yes, we are. This is worth what I tell you it's worth. And I've got my military behind me to back. Oh, what? They're not, they're not back there? Are you sure? Uh, hold on a second. Uh, well, damn. Okay, I mean, you know, maybe we can talk this over in a more... Are you sure they're not that... <laughs> and that's how it ends. Because yeah. these are just little men. Little men with big armies, but when their armies aren't there anymore, well, they're just little men who have no other option but to walk away. And, and we're seeing that right now in the Middle East, in South America, the, the armies have come down on the side of the people, and I believe it will be our militaries who, instead of killing us all, will end up saving all of us by refusing to fight, to fight their own people. And that's how it ends. But before we say goodbye, let's go ahead and bid a fond farewell to some of this baggage that, that we've been carrying along for too long. Yeah, the, the stuff that we've just cut loose, you know, which has been officially labeled as obsolete. Look, there it goes. Oh, yeah, this would be nice to, to say goodbye to some of these things. And, uh, you know, as we bid adieu, well, I think maybe we should go out with a song. What do you think? Uh, oh, no. A fine farewell to
that child.